Hey, welcome back to my Silver Stripe tutorials. In the last video, I mentioned how we were going to touch up the search results a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to move these results to an include file, similar to how we're using pagination here. So we're just going to copy this out. We're going to say include video search results. Okay. And then we're going to create a new file and we're going to paste that back in. We're going to save that under includes and we're going to call it what we called it. And that's video search results. Okay, we'll just refresh our browser and make sure that there's no change. Okay, so all it's doing is including the results in a different file. Next, we're going to add the video thumbnail. So in our video object, that's under this directory again. We're going to need to import a new class under the same namespace as file, and that's going to be image. And then in our has one, we'll add that. So that's the video thumbnail. And that is an image. Okay. And then we're going to add that to owns. Just like that. And then run a dev build. Okay, so now our video should keep track of a video thumbnail. Now we're just going to add the CMS field for that, which is just going to be another upload field. So we'll just copy this down and then take that thumbnail and paste it in there. All right, now if you open up one of your video objects, you should be able to upload a thumbnail. Now we're just going to update our template to use the video thumbnail. We're going to call fill 400 and 225, which is just going to keep the video aspect ratio. And then we're going to add a wrapper class around here. I'm going to call it call for. This is a bootstrap thing. And then we're going to do the same thing down here, but we're going to call it call six. And we're going to add a class up here called D flex. Go ahead and also add MY2. That's going to add some vertical spacing in between the results. But if we look at our results now, you can see that our video thumbnail is showing. All right, I went ahead and added thumbnails for each of these videos. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be able to filter by categories. Okay, so back in our video search page controller, we're going to filter out by category similar to how we do by title. So we're going to just take this, and go down here. And instead of keywords, it will be category. And then we'll set category to search. All right, now similar to how we filter here, we're going to go down here. All right, and we're going to filter by category ID. And that is going to be search. Excuse me, change this to video categories. It needs to be what we have set in our video object. So it would be video categories.id. Next, we're going to add the categories filter as a drop down. So it's going to be under the same forms namespace as text field. And we're going to say drop down field. Then we're going to open that up right under our text field in our video search form. And that's going to be category. Now 
Now we need to fill this drop down with a list of all the available video categories. So we're going to get the video categories. And then we're going to run this map method. And it's going to be ID and title. And what that is, is that the title will be what displays in the drop down, but the ID will be the value. Lastly, we'll call one more method on here, and that's going to be set empty string. And that's just going to be the default value that's in the drop down. All right, I've gone ahead and created a new unique category. Remember, you can do that in the categories model admin. And I've gone ahead and added it to this video. So if we go to our search page, we should see the options in here. So we'll click nature. And this is the only video under that category. Now, you may notice that if we just search by a category, we get this unfinished sentence here, searching for, searching for what? So we're going to make some adjustments to this. First things first here, our category filter is just going to show the ID, which isn't very helpful for the end user. So what we're going to do is we're going to say video category, get filter, and we're going to say the ID equal to the search. Then we're going to say first, which just gets the first video category out of this query. And then we're going to just say title. Now in our search page template, we're going to add some inline checks. So we're going to say if category, we'll say in category. just like this. Make sure you close it off. Now if you refresh you'll see searching for in nature which still doesn't really read right so we're gonna have a check for the label here to see if we have any keyword set. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing for label that we did for categories. So we'll copy this, add it right here, we'll say for label and then we'll have to close off that conditional just like that. Now if we refresh we'll see searching in nature but if we add labor here we'll see two of our active filters searching for labor searching in nature so we'll want to move searching outside of the loop so all we'll need to do is take the opening and closing P tags, move them outside of the loop, and take searching, and just move it up here. Now if we go back and refresh, we should see searching for labor in nature. And if we were to remove that, we would get just searching for labor. All right, that's about all I have for this one. In the next video, we'll go over Ajax, which is a cool feature that will allow us to search without any page refresh. So catch you then.